Before we begin, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Mr. Chibs, and I review stuff that gets me fired up. All right, I'm here at Toronto Audio Fest, and uh, I'm pretty excited. So the first guy I want to talk to is Lewis from Audio, Audio Excellence, Excellence, who I know very Hi. well. Well, I met Lewis just now, but Hi hello, there. Lewis. Welcome to Toronto Audio Fest. We're featuring our room today with Acora, so please come on in and um, listen to our three systems we have set up. It's fantastic, well appointed, and um, sounding great. Awesome. So that's what we're doing. So you have that whole room over there? Yes. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, it was great to meet you. A pleasure as usual. And, and you guys are selling shirts for charity, correct? Yes, we are. Uh, and also, if you buy three shirts, you qualify for a uh, draw for the new LRS Plus. Oh, the new Magna MagnaPan. MagnaPan LRS Plus. Very yes. nice. The ones with the sands. Yes. Where does the charity go? Red Cross? or? Um, it will go to either the Red Cross uh, for Florida or the East Coast in Canada, which suffered from the hurricane. So we're trying to help our brothers and sisters here. Good stuff. All right, well, it was a pleasure meeting you, Lewis. Okay, take care. Thank you so much. Right, I'm looking you. forward to this. Okay. What is your name? My name is Jason Zidal. Jason from Dolly. Yep, I actually work specifically with Lenbrook. We're the owners of PSB and NAD and Blue Sound. And Blue Sound. Exactly, everybody knows that blue sound, and we are the North American distributors for Dali speakers. Good stuff. What type of speakers are Dali? So Dali really has a wide range, starting with $400 bookshelves right on up to our flagship that we're debuting here in North America, the Dali Core, at $150,000 Canadian a pair. Wow. Dali is an acronym. The D for Dali stands for Danish, they are out of Denmark. And if you have a bit more of a global view, you see just how popular that company and speakers out of that country are. Um, you know, here in North America, we know the two superpowers, North American speakers, Canadian and American with a slightly warm sound, and those from the UK, a little brighter, a little sharper. Dali is sort of the, uh, the Goldilocks of the audio world. It's just right, right in the middle. And uh, around the world, you see many companies, or retailers, I should say, putting little Danish flags on their Dali speakers nice. to indicate that exactly. Because otherwise, when you step out of North America, it's incredibly well known. Second largest speaker cabinet manufacturer in the world behind only Klipsch. Wow. Um, and we're trying to get them to lean into their heritage here, trying to spread the word, letting everybody know them. Good just stuff. who Dali is. So... Uh, what would you recommend as a starting point for uh, your speakers? The starting point really should be the $150,000 course. Of course. No. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite starting point would probably be this series right over here called Opticon. And the reason I say that is it's the series that really starts to integrate a lot of the key DALI technologies. Our core speaker out there has this type of high frequency module where we pair a soft dome tweeter, which is really known wonderfully for its dispersion and the smoothness, and it's paired with a ribbon tweeter that's known for the airiness. So you really get a best of both worlds. Nice. And that's something you see throughout the higher end series by Dali. That's probably why I say it would be a wonderful starting point for Dali, okay. the Opticon Mark II series. And once we, go, once we go up from there? Once we go up <laughs> from there, there you step that's into... That's a really nice cabinet. That's a pretty beautiful cabinet, and that's what Epicon is really known for. A lot of similar technologies. You'll still have that high-frequency module with a larger ribbon. Here we'll integrate some of our technology that isn't quite as readily visible, but here where we'll have uh, something called SMC in the magnet system. It actually starts all the way at the affordable Oberon series. Okay. SMC is patented by DALI. All other magnets are iron-based, and the problem with that is iron demagnetizes and magnetizes at different speeds. It means you're going to have eddy currents, hysteresis, problems like that. 
Dali is the only company that integrates this patented magnet system that has all the magnetic properties without the electric properties. So all that problem with distortion and iron-based magnets do not exist. So you have that in Epicon, you have it in Phantom, you have it in Opticon, and even right down to a very affordable Oberon series. So that's one of the technologies we hang our hat on. Very nice. And then from there, I guess we go up into the into the big boy room. You could go there, or what is really popular oh, more and more, more in our industry. <laughs> I didn't notice. Is the, is the CI industry custom installation, which is wow. You know, I would say about thirty to forty percent of our portfolio and and sales worldwide. Um, so that's got like no cabinet. So this will be the stuff that you integrate into the ceilings and the walls. Oh, I got you. I got Sound you'll hear, but not see. So this is. An incredibly shallow speaker made to be set in the wall. That's so cool. But all the while integrating so much of the same technology that you see in our $150,000 system. Wow. But here you get to save the money of an expensive cabinet, but still have all the great sound. And not have any of the resonance, I guess. Mind you, then you've got problems in the wall with resonance, no? Well, you know, that's why a, pro a speaker like this will have its own back cabinet. So no matter where you put it in a wall that may have a lot of insulation and vapor barrier yeah. or a wall that's completely empty. Now, if you didn't have a back cabinet, those two areas would sound very different because of the cavity. Absolutely. We take that out of the equation by integrating the back box to make sure no matter where it's installed, it'll be consistent, always sound the same, that's so always cool. give you Dali performance. Can I see the back? Absolutely. That's really cool. So shallow enough to be put into two by four studs to right. fit into pretty much any wall. Cabinet, MDF, so it'll have the same acoustic properties as just about any high-end speaker. So Very nice. This is practically a big Opticon just without the cabinet. Awesome. I didn't know that was an option. It is an option, and it's becoming a more popular go-to by consumers worldwide. Very cool. And then, as you said, is the big boy. The Dally Core speaker, the undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champion <laughs> of the world. I love it. Weighing in at 382 pounds. That is our new flagship. This is the debut in North America. It had previously only been playing uh, at ISC and in Munich, I should say. And this is the first chance for people in North America to see and hear it. All right, here I am with... Isabeau Corriveau. Isa, it's fine. Isabeau. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Hi. <laughs> I'm a harpist, and this is my new album actually playing. Um, it's, a, it's called A Leap of Fate. It's me with seven other musicians. I do a lot of composition, but I do also a lot of Celtic music and classical music. But this is my Celtic album. Well, not the only one, but mostly Celtic Angba. It's me with seven other musicians. It's harp, cello, violin, bass, guitar, guitar, um, two percussionists and another singer. So some pieces are instrumental, some are sang. And uh, it's really soothing, very enveloping. Uh, and I think it well, can be, everybody can enjoy this for quite an evening, quiet evening, or just have a, a nice thing to listen to that's different than what we hear everywhere. And where can we find it? Uh, online, at, on my website, isabocorriveau.com. I can show, actually, my name. So, my name is Isabeau Corriveau, and so, dot com. And you can buy it directly there, actually. The LPs, the CDs, and the downloads. But not streaming, or? Uh, not yet, but not it's yet. coming. It's we'll coming. get there. And how do you like it through the Kef speakers? Oh, it's really nice, actually. I love those speakers. I have Kef speakers at home, too, but, but uh, not these ones, but I really uh, am a fan of it, so it's really nice. Very nice. <laughs> Which ones are, are they playing out of, the blue ones? Yes. Uh, no, actually, I think it's the... Well, the blade ones. The, the red ones. Sorry, <laughs> the red sorry, ones. Sorry, I didn't no, know. No, that's okay, that's okay. <laughs> it's kind of a... And can you show us your harp? Yes, it's right there, actually. One, one of my harps, yeah. So that's my Celtic harp. And I, this has to be a, like not easy to, to bring over here. To schlep. Well, it's not too bad. You know, I can carry it around. Uh, would you hear it if I play a little bit? Or yeah, I'd love okay. to. I'd okay. love it.
Beautiful. That was so good. Wow, what a treat. So I'm here with Renee Evans. Did I pronounce it right? That is absolutely correct. Booyah. <laughs> you get something for Christmas. Oh, fantastic. Not I love Christmas. Frilly, nothing fancy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, okay. we'll talk about that later. Excellent. <laughs> so you represent? I am the owner of Saturn Audio. Okay. Uh, we're from Cambridge, Ontario. Cool. We're a manufacturer of core electronics, so everything from power filters, uh, uh, phono stages, digital analog converters, preamplifiers, integrated amplifiers, and then standalone amplifiers. Very cool. And uh, all solid state, class AB amplification. Very nice. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, we're four and a half years old and uh, we're growing quite well. Yeah, so the top unit is the phono stage. There is an external power supply that's hidden behind. Right. Underneath it is the integrated amplifier, which is a 90 watt per channel into eight ohms, uh, class AB, five inputs, uh, balanced. Uh, the DAC underneath and the power filter at the bottom. Not oh, shown okay. here is the preamplifier and the amplifier, but. Gotcha. It's space constraints for a show. Yeah, and the speakers. The speakers are Alta Audio. Uh, they're from New York State. Uh, this is pretty much their flagship. And then uh, there are other models that are lower in the chain, but fantastic sounding. And uh, we work together because we both share the same thing, which is a natural sound. Uh, we don't try and do too much detail. We want everything balanced and uh, just wonderful to listen to. Good stuff. So, Basically, cool. he's a counterpart with a philosophy that shares with mine, and alikes are alikes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I walked in here, and we were listening, and it sounded really, really good. And, and that's something to be said for, you know, a room like this, which isn't, you know, so well treated. So. Yeah. Well, this is a difficult room. I, when we came in on Thursday to set up, we didn't have anything here, and the sound was just flying everywhere. Yeah, terrible. I can imagine. And then we figured out to put all this here. And it really helped us out. And then, of course, people walk in and it just changes the room again. So yeah. it's a show. You accept it and you just go, I have an idea of what's going on here. And uh, if you want to learn more, you go to a dealer and take a listen there. Good stuff. Well, well, despite the fact that you're in this room, it just sounds great. So. Well, thank you very much. Nice. Yeah. Cool. And how much do I owe you for that? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Maybe perhaps a Lumen device? I don't know. Well, we can talk about Lumen whenever you like. I'd love to. Okay, okay. so over there, which, uh, which model is that? So this is the brand new T3. The T3 is a DAC and streamer in the same package. Right. So Lumen offers pretty much two options uh, in their lineup at the, the entry level is the D2 and there's the new U1 Mini. So one has a DAC, one is just the streamer. The They're U1 at, Mini or the U2 Mini? Uh, sorry, the U2 Mini just came out. I'm sorry. Right. No, yeah. no, no worries. Yeah, it's uh, my brain's addled. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then there was the T2, but the T3's now come up. Now, a lot of those, they do have some signal path changes, uh, but, you know, new chips, new ideas, and uh, move forward. Uh, still the basic thing that, you know, same app, same power supply. Right. Uh, pretty much the same unit, but slight improvements there. And the DAC in there is a chip, I'm assuming it's a chip-based DAC. It's a Sabre, Sabre yeah, right. ES9038. Um, Anyways, There's the same brain. You can't keep track with the numbers. That I am not a numbers person. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um, I can tell you every Rush album and every song. I've oh heard, my God, Rush. Don't even get me started about Rush. <laughs> I love Rush. Well, then we'll hug later. <laughs> um, yeah, awesome band. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, There's so, Toronto as well, right? Oh, Getty absolutely. Lee. I, yeah, I, We'll talk later about that. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the T3, which I think in the pantheon of, big words, pantheon of yeah. Lumen is the best bang for your buck if you're mm -hmm. a regular set. If you're rich, go and you know, get the fancy one with the uh, fancy external power supply and all that, but it is a great, great product. So the internal power supply to that, switch mode or? It's, it's, a, it's a switching power it's supply. It's a switch mode power supply. Um, and you can, uh, there's a company that uh, we have actually represented here, which is S-Booster Power Supplies yep. from Europe. And this can be upgraded to that. Right. And so the, virtually all the lumens that have internal switchers are all being changed over. And does it make a big difference in your opinion? Very or much so. It does. My analogy is this. Well, before I say that, as a manufacturer, I can tell you the most expensive thing in electronics power is the power supply. Interesting. It's the heaviest thing. You have to get electrically certified. Yep. You can go buy a switching power. The one in there, you can go to DigiKey, go and buy it. It's 
very and inexpensive. The, and they're tiny too, so they're and easier they're to tiny, ship. They're tiny, they're light, small packaging and all that. Yeah. That's all well and good. Then once you get into toroidal transformers and your linear, your power supply, linear, your yeah. price goes right up. But it's stable, it's got oomph behind it, and you wouldn't put a lawnmower engine in a pickup truck that's towing a trailer. Gotcha. So maybe you can on a flat <clears throat> surface with the wind behind you, but as soon as you hit a hill, as soon as you need to you know, get a headwind and figure that out, you have a problem. So when you do add that, there is a significant, it's obvious all the time. No one has ever said, oh, this is nothing. That's so cool. Oh, wow. But okay, so let's say with the Lumen, with the new U2 Mini, um, that as well comes with the switch mode power supply and not, not a Correct. linear. Um, but it's not using a DAC. So my question for you is, would it still be advantageous to upgrade that to a linear power Absolutely. supply? Absolutely. Really? Even yeah. though it's just doing streaming to the DAC? Go and take one of those and put it into a switch, an ethernet switch. Put it onto your router. Yeah. That's what happens. It's quite remarkable. It surprised me. I'm a skeptic. It actually does work. So, really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Good yeah. to know. So. Very cool. You've been told. You will believe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the heart the heart of anything is power. Is so, the power. Yeah, without it, nothing's running. So. Do they? Does Lumen make uh, a, just a standalone streamer with a linear power supply, or is it just? Yes, they're you. They're. In the past tense, you won the U2s coming out, the bigger one. But uh, they do have an external supply. And it doesn't have a DAC in it? Or it does the have U, it? The U2 does not have does a not. DAC. So that's good. Yeah. So I should so, check out that out or yeah. maybe yeah, exactly. check it out. It's your wallet. You know what <laughs> you want. But uh, yeah, absolutely. OK, cool. All right, well, it was such a, such a great chance to meet you and, and hear about your company and the Lumen. And, and find out that I like Rush. And find out that you like Very Rush important. and Getty Lee, who yeah. is, he, they're one of my favorites for sure. Yeehaw. All right, <laughs> cool. All right, take care. Thank you so much. So this is Travis. So uh, yeah, I just toured your room. And the one thing that came to mind when I saw the FR30s in person is it's a freaking vertical Ferrari. Like they are so Freaking gorgeous in the dark. Great compliment. In the Thank dark you very color. much. Chris will really appreciate that. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Why don't you tell me about the technology that um, goes into them? Yeah, and... FR30 has been a long time in making. It took us five years to develop it. It started with Paul. Uh, Paul and Stan started PS Audio going on 40 years ago now. That's I'm a big fan and, of Paul. Yeah, I exactly. watch his YouTube Paul's all the time. pretty active on all the online me social media stuff. So. Uh, and he kind of worked with Arnie Nadell at Infinity after his initial time with PS Audio. And Arnie had a dream to make a full range speaker that, that really delivered everything you wanted to hear. And Paul said about this about five years ago, trying to make this happen. And the, to make the dream a reality, it took three different iterations. And we finally have the FR30, so we're real pleased about it. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a um, planar magnetic uh, tweeter in mid that's pretty special with a special diaphragm on it that makes it really, really fast and really, really precise while offering a special design woofer uh, to uh, really complete the bass there for it. And it's a great speaker and it's really full range and we're real proud of it. Anything else you want to talk about as far as uh, the gear that you have in there or? Oh, happy to talk about the gear that we have in there. The system that we're listening to in there is the new uh, DirectStream Mark II DAC. That's new here this weekend. We pulled the first one off the line earlier this week, so cool. that's exciting. BHK 600 monoblocks, which are also new this year, and the FR30. Those are the three new things we have going in there. In addition to our classic P20 power plant, uh, SACD transport, and BHK preamplifier. Good stuff. The room isn't so great for no, acoustics, so and I just I want to just borrow them for a couple days. Just put them on my. I'll give them back. I yeah, promise. Everyone does. Everyone <laughs> does. It's a great sounding speaker, and we're real proud of it. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. So my name is Ofer Gershman. I'm from Gershman Acoustics uh, here in Toronto. We've been around for um, 30 years now. And um, this room is a room that has all Canadian products except Cardis, which is our wonderful friend from the States. The cables. The cables, of course. And so we have Eon Art, which is the amplifier. They're from uh, Quebec. We have uh, Oracle has been around for about 35 years now. 
and Gershman Acoustics, who we're right here in Markham, and we've been around, it's going to be our 30th uh, year anniversary. Uh, what we have here, we're showcasing our uh, Grand Avant-Garde, which is an, a design that's been in work for about 28 years or so. It's just been improving throughout the years. So it's a lifetime achievement, really. Um, what's really unique about this speaker is that it's such a small speaker, but it has a huge sound stage, huge sound, uh, very, very low bass, but it's a mature bass. It's a very tight and... Fast. Uh, exactly. I've noticed that. Uh, yeah, so everybody who comes into this room is asking me, where is it? You Where's know, the where subwoofer? It? Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I definitely noticed a, a fast bass. So the, the secret about this uh, speaker is that the woofer has what we call a bass trap, uh, which was designed, and it's a proprietary uh, design for Mr. Gershman. Um, so the back wave that comes from the uh, cone of the um, woofer, instead of hitting back the back wall of the speaker, then ricocheting through the cone again, it goes down through docks to the bass trap and dissipates. It really provides us with a very clean, very deep and accurate bass, which is incredible. Um, and so we're able to produce like full range of frequency with this very, very small speaker. So that's been actually, it's been a classic in that, in this regard, like everybody really is looking for, uh, you know, for this type of a, of a sound and in such a little, you know, little small package. Yeah, no, they're actually quite beautiful. Yeah. And then I hope I can say all the right information about this uh, amplifier, but but Stefan's here, so if we don't know much about it, we can always ask him. So we have, it's Ion Art is from uh, Quebec. Okay. Uh, and I think they've been around for about 10 years. A, an excellent company. Uh, they've, done, they've done a really incredible job in uh, designing these amplifiers. And what's nice about it, you can actually open it up and, and look inside. You can take the, con the different parts of it and upgrade it uh, if you need to. Um, and um, from what I understand, it has, uh, it's a hybrid, so it has a class D amplification, and uh, the preamp is tube amp, so this combination is just incredible. My name is Stefan Oka. Stefan, good yeah, to meet I, you. I was the main designer for those amplifiers. In fact, the company exists about 20 years, and it took like the first 10 years to get that first model out. Uh, we have the largest lab for electronic audio electronics in Canada in one of the largest in North America so like big supercomputers screen large like the walls and things like that so it's a lot of technology it's a lot of science we designed the first amplifier we designed was that one that's it's a quark what's interesting about it it's, it's an integra stereo integrated uh, amplifier uh -huh. sure the first thing you will see is that it can be open or closed you have a lock on the back for the kids you get inside a tube power uh, preamplifier, it's an integrated, so you get a tube preamp, tube power supply for the preamp. You have a solid state input stage for the amp section, and you have a class D output stage for the amplifier. But when I mean output stage, I mean the only two last transistor in the whole schematic are class D. The idea for that is that you don't, you don't need too many transistor to get the power. The idea is that you want to have the less signature as possible. You will find that if I didn't say that it was a class D, nobody will have believed it. Yeah, it has no signature at all. Uh, why we do that is because you only need two transistors with a class D to push the power on. So if you compare to class A, class AB with 16 transistors, even if we got the best transistor of the world, they still have a signature. Right. And if you add it 16 times, it's like I give you a bit of salt and put it 16 times in your plate. At some point, it will taste only salt. When you get used to a system that's neutral like this, after that, it's difficult. You go to a tube and ah, that sounds like tube. Amp. You go to a transistor and that sounds like transistor, solid state. <laughs> that's neutral. Right. So that's for the, the quark, the stereo model. But we also have monoblock. Now, this one is open for the show, but it's not connect yet. These one are connect. That's what we will listen to. Okay. These are monoblocks, so 250 watt, 8 ohm, can go down to 1 ohm. What's interesting in those is that they are synchronized. So you can have up to six of those amplifiers that are synchronized each together, all together. 
And it's the same architecture. You get one channel preamplifier, mm -hmm. which is power supply, and one channel amplifier. So it's an integrated monoblock. You will never find that anywhere else. Wow. It's because an integrated gives you a lot of advantage as you can control the both sides of the amplification. And it's easier to get the better performance for the set. So we've done the same thing here, but since you have only one channel for the preamp, you need to uh, be able to control both of them at the same time, or many of them at the same time. So we had a system, a link system, that lets you control all of them. They will follow, they talk to each other, right. and they will follow and set up themselves. So, but it's the same architecture. All the parts that will wear over time are yep. on a separate uh, PCB board that you will find on that table. Okay. That you can swap every five years. If something this goes wrong. Put, this, no, this product will never hitch. Because, oh. you know, capacitor, yeah. they have a, a lifespan from 2,000 to 8,000 hours maximum. Right. Most of the time, 4,000. Okay. Yeah. So all of those capacitor, contrary to other brands, are on a separate board that we exchange every five years, so the products stay brand new. The rest ah. is plastic and aluminum. We don't know to get rid of that. Very cool. Nobody talked to you about the, that beautiful Delphiton table, right. or partner, or Ecolo Audio. We've gone to Ecolo Audio to make the casing of our electronics, like 10 years ago. Right. And we've done that because they are master in aluminum. Look at that beauty. So that's why we asked them to make the, uh, the casing of that. It's more than just a small case. It has uh, heat pipe technologies inside, and it's all built on uh, German mechanics inside. But they are the best to work with aluminum, and the Delphi is there for, my God, more than 30 years now, improving all the time. 69 for the stereo unit, but now oh. we will listen to the mono unit. Mono unit will be 140,000 for the, for, for the set. I know that the Delphi turntable should be around 25, 24. 25. 25. And the uh, amplifier is uh, 2750. And those beautiful speakers? Uh, the speakers are 17,000. 17. And they come with the isoacoustic uh, feet. So isoacoustic's Canadian, isn't, yes, aren't they? exactly. I thought so. Except for the cable here, everything you hear is skinny. Right, that, right, you told me, of course. <laughs> Thank you both. This was, this was really informative, and you have a gorgeous system here. My pleasure. This, what, what are we doing? All right, so uh, I just I wanted to chat about your, uh, your Galleon. All right. Your amp. Should we find somewhere quiet? Yeah, we can find somewhere quiet. Oh, this is good. Okay, first of all, we're recording, but it's fine. I love your channel. You're, oh, I've got right here. Oh, you're getting mic'd too. <laughs> we're both, oh, man, we're both mic'd up. I need this for my channel. They're great. Yeah. And it's an easy setup. And that can also connect to your phone. Yeah, yeah. So Look, look at that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Thomas from Thomas and & Stereo. And right now at the Toronto Audio Show, I'm demoing my Galleon TS120 Tube Integrator Am. So what can I say about it? I'll do it this way. <laughs> What do you think about the bass? Uh, there was a lot of bass. Did, did, did really it surprise impressive. you? Okay, it, it's a 30 watt class A amp, right? Did it surprise you the amount of bass came out from? It was an open baffle speaker, Leonidas Extreme. Right. So the bass, like, talk about it. <laughs> there was quite a bit of bass. Um, it was almost like there was a subwoofer in the room. Mm -hmm. so, so 30 watts, but it's class A. Mm -hmm. Um, but you've also got tubes in there. Yeah. So were the tubes on, or was it in solid state mode? Or can you differentiate? I'm not sure. Uh, no, this is a pure tube class A 30 watt. So amp. the tubes are always going. Yeah. So it's not a hybrid. Yeah. So there's no like class D amp in it, none got of it. that, right? It's not a hybrid. This is pure class A tube amp. And what's the advantage? You get a big sound stage. Right? Totally. Right. You have that yeah, wall it was to wall. And here, here's the part I like at the audio show. So people stand on the side, they listen, okay, it's good, it's good. But the second they sit down, that is where they go like, holy sh**, yeah. because of the sound stage, right? And the bass is uh, correct at the sitting spot. So it was fun, I'm um, really happy with it because um, I love seeing people's jaw drop. Yeah, yeah no, my, my jaw. Oh, I'm oh, 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 look at him. That's Come okay, on, you're on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>
I've never listened to a, uh, a tube amplifier before. Okay. So when I think 30 watts, I think, oh, well, my Hegel is like 150. Yeah. So, yeah. but I mean, obviously that's driving your speakers, you know, really well. So class yeah. A and tube is a totally different ballpark and one that, you know, it's out of my scope of mm -hmm. understanding, but mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'm learning every step I go. Well, just a no, because a lot of people, that's the problem. You listen to this class A and 30 watts and you hear the bass coming out of it you might expect other two amps to sound like that. Right. That's the problem. And they don't. They don't. Well, we were playing the other, your other tube amp. Oh, yes. And we were playing some Diana Crawl, and it was sort of anemic uh, as far as the sound. And then when you switched it over, it was a huge difference. Yeah, OK. Uh, I won't mention the other amp. It's a different company. Um, but yeah, you hear the dynamic difference, the dynamic contrast, the dynamic power. And that's why you don't hear that in a lot of amp. That's why I am so happy it blew people away. Fantastic. All right. It was such a pleasure meeting you. Okay, later. <laughs> to wrap up, Toronto Audio Fest was awesome. This was my first audio show that I've ever been to, and it was just, if I can give you an analogy, my parents took me to F.E.O. Schwartz in New York when I was like 10 years old, and this is how I felt, like a kid in a mega, massive toy store. There was just so much eye candy and so many systems. Everyone that I interviewed and that I met was just so down to earth and knowledgeable and cool. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for being that way. You made my experience that much better. Would I do anything differently next time? Do I have any regrets? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I didn't have nearly enough time to check out each and every exhibit and sit down and just listen. Ideally, I would have liked to have been there all three days. I only went one day, but that'll be rectified going forward because, oh, there's, there's no way I'm going to miss another audio show. So with that, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. I've got some cool stuff coming up, so stay tuned. See that plane over there? That's a male plane. You know how I could tell? The little balls. The little balls.